Hi guys, welcome to my first Psycho Pie tutorial video. Because this is our beginning video, let's play with some simple things today, which is called the n back task. It is one of the most popular experiments in today's cognitive related studies. The rules in back tasks are quite straightforward. In the zero back task, the answer to each question is simply the currently displayed number. In the one back task, participants need to respond with the number that appeared before the current one. As we move to the two-back task, the answer will be the number that appeared two steps before the current one and so on. Today, let's build up a one-back task experiment. So now, let's start with PsychoPy. In this example, we will be using a task stimulus and a keyboard response along with the loop flow. First, let's insert a new routine and name it number since we will define the numbers used in this study here. Then let's insert a text stimulus and name it number stim. The start time means the start point in this routine. For example, if we want the number to be showing the third second in this routine, then we can put three here. And the stop here means the stop point of your stimulus. You can see, actually, there are several options for you to set the duration of your stimulus. If we select time here, it is the exact time that you want your stimulus to stop. For example, if we set the start time as 1 and the stop time as 3, we can see the duration here as 2 seconds. But if we change stop time to duration, We can see now the stimulus will end at second 4. Now we just set the time back to 0 to 10 seconds, which means our number will show on the screen for 10 seconds. Then the text here, let's just put 1 for now. Then click OK. Now we get a settled stimulus. Next, let's add a keyboard response, since we want to let our participants enter the answer using the keyboard. We can rename it as answer. The start and stop here are the same as the task stimulus. We want the keyboard to start working just as the number shows up on the screen. So we set the start time at the same time as the task stimulus. And we make the stop point the same too. Here we have a checkbox, fourth end of routine. If we take this box, it means when the participants given the keyboard response, all stimuli in the current routine will be falsely ended. That is what we want in our study. We want to move to the next question after the participants respond. So let's keep this box tick. The allowed keys here need us to define all the keys that work in this routine. We want those keys here. In the data tab here, we can set which key we want PsychoPy to store in the final data file. If we have the predefined correct answer, we can click this box and we will talk about this parameter here later. So now we have one number stimulus and one corresponding response. We want to make it a loop now. So let's first insert a loop in our flow. Let's name this loop as one back. The loop type here refers to the loop type of the conditions. In this experiment, we want them to be random, and we want every loop to become a trial, so we take this box. This n wraps means the number of condition repetitions. The selecting rules here is to define the rules in your condition file that you want to use, for example, line 0 to line 5. But we don't need this parameter in this study, so we just leave it as blank. The random seed here is to define a random sequence. I will leave it blank for this study. Now we come to conditions. So I create an Excel file here, and I just put one column here, steam. The rows in this file refer to conditions, and the columns here refer to parameters. So if I select this file here, we can see it says 10 conditions is one parameter. OK, so how should we link our parameters with stimulus? Let's back to our number stim. We can put the parameter with this symbol. 
Then Psychopi will know that it needs to look for conditions for this parameter in the predefined Excel file. And don't forget to change it as set every repeat because we want the theme to be changed during each loop. And do you still remember the correct answer things in the response component? So if we predefine some correct answers for our study in the Excel file, such as we put each condition's corresponding answer into a column named um, correct ends, then we put correct ends here so that in the final output file, Psychopy will directly store whether the participant response is correct with T or F. Okay, now we complete a really simple but uh, hopefully workable one back study. Let's run it and have a look. Okay, so I'm participant one. Five, seven, six, nine, zero, one, three, four, eight. Great, it works perfectly. That's all for today's tutorial. Hope you like this video and hope it is helpful for your psychopi study. If you have any questions about the things I'm talking about today, just leave a comment. And thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.